If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. What's up, Bombshells? Welcome to Bombshell 1111 Podcast, Therapy for Women of Color. My name is Kia, and I'm your host. Generally, podcasts request donations, but I want you to show love by simply subscribing to my social media platforms by visiting my website at www.bombshell1111podcast.com. I want to see thousands of subscribers on this platform. Leave your comments, and I'll show love by shouting you out on my social media platforms, such as Instagram and Facebook. I want to thank you for your continued support as always. And with that being said, let's jump into this new episode. My name is Dr. Don Minge, and I'm here tonight to drop some bombs with Bombshell 1111. Welcome back, you guys. Welcome back to Bombshell 1111 Podcast. I'm Kia, and I'm your host. Tonight, we'll be talking about cognitive disabilities in education with our special guest, Dr. Don. So without further ado, you guys, let's jump right into it, Bombshells. Welcome, Dr. Don. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Thank you so much for coming on and being a part of the podcast. I look forward to hearing the knowledge and the tools that you're going to be sharing with us tonight. Um, Again, thank you so much for coming on and being a part of the podcast, Dr. Dunn. Oh, absolutely. I love sharing uh, my experiences and my knowledge and anything I can about special education, uh, being a children's author, or a mother mother and a grandmother. (laughs) (laughs) So, Dr. Dunn, let's jump right in. Um, There's a little description, of course, um, well, the bio in the description down below um, for the audience to be able to get some background information about you. But I also like to allow the audience to hear the guests give a a short, you know, background story or short, short bio on the guests and who they are, where they're from and what they do. So can you give us um, a little information, share your story with us, let us know who you are, where you're from and how did you get started started with where you are today? I live in a small mountain community in Southern California, and it's actually snowing right now. I teach students with severe cognitive delays. I've been doing this for over 20 years. I started as an assistant, and then I started teaching. I have a PhD in curriculum instruction. My dissertation was actually written on the federal uh, standards for transition, which would be community, um, independent skills, training, working and I also have an educational series that I actually started writing while I was getting my credential it was an assignment and then I used it uh, with my students we kind of went around in some elementary schools made a little skit out of it and we do the skit I would go back the next day and explain my students disabilities or behaviors you know whatever questions the children had and it's now turned into um, 13 books it's won 70 awards and several of them are from the Conquering Disabilities with Film Festival because I've included disabilities in my books. Mm, that's awesome. That's awesome. Now, Dr. Don, you have over 20 plus years of experience with working with um, children with severe cognitive delays. For the listening audience who don't have an understanding or um, know the clinical definition of what a cognitive delay is, could you please define it for us? Well, my students are um, severely handicapped. So cognitively, intellectually, it's under 70. And they have other disabilities. So they have multiple disabilities. They have intellectual disabilities. They have seizure disorders, autism, Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, um, visual impairments, hearing disorders, 
Um, sometimes they have more than one disability. So my students, I'm in a self-contained classroom. We're specialized. We usually have usually one or two classrooms right now on campus that we have three classrooms that are specialized. It's a junior, senior high. And um, it just kind of, it, we start at preschool and we go, our students stay until their 22nd birthday. That's so awesome. That is so awesome. For, for parents that are listening and maybe have a, a suspicion or maybe think that they may have a, a, a younger child um, with a learning disability, and just with your work experience, what areas can a parent you know, suspect that a child may have a learning disability so they can be able to help identify that and get the proper resources in place for that child? Uh, well, they, you know, uh, there's all sorts of learning disabilities. It's really hard to, to define. If your child is having trouble in school, first, your first resource is, of course, the, the teacher. And you can also go to the administration. You can request that your child be tested if you think, if your child is falling behind, to be eligible for special education, they have to be two years behind in grade level. And then they get assessed and then they get, it gets determined whether they need like an RSP class mm -hmm. or they need a self-contained class like we have. It's all based on the results of the disability. But a parent, if, you know what, most of the time, if you think there's something not quite going on, not quite right, and you can't pinpoint what it is, then, then you need to ask for some guidance. They also have um, organizations within the community, like for our, for our children, we have the Indian Regional Center and they help the families with respite care, which is um, they come in, take care of the child so you can go out and go grocery shopping or do whatever you need to do. Yeah. They have behavioral therapists that will come in and work with your child within the home. Sometimes they come into the classroom. They help transition the child into the community. You know, sometimes our parents, they can't take their child to the store. They can't, you know, so it kind of really limits the, how they can navigate their lives. So there are many resources, Department of Rehab, Social Security. There's mm -hmm. all sorts of resources out there. Yeah. Um, so just from my previous work experience, I was a vocational rehabilitation counselor and okay. um, work with a lot of individuals, all ages, even youth, helping you know them get connected to competitive uh, employment um, within the workforce. And pretty much it, it was very similar to um, what you're saying is getting, the com the, getting them connected with additional supports to help them be able to live that same type of lifestyle. Um, you know, as anyone else, um, that would be, you know, getting job coaches um, in place for them, um, you know, things like that. And then um, when I did care coordination, as you just spoke about respite care, those are some of the things that we would also put in place for some of the children as well. So I know those things can be very beneficial for parents um, when they just need like a, a break to be able to just, like you said, go to do something as simple just as go as to go grocery shopping yes um so yeah definitely understand that yeah we actually do a lot of that that's uh, my my specialty is the workability and the transition okay and today my students rode the city bus and they went and worked at cbs <laughs> tomorrow they're going to go work at walgreens we also do um i work with mountain hardware which is the hardware store in my little town and we, they've been helping us for it's got to be 14 years now yeah. and they i have things that will bring into the classroom like we've been adding up the receipts for the donations that they that they get mm -hmm. and we add um tags yeah. to the ski hats we've done all sorts of things and then they give us a movie pass every month and we go to the movies so thursday we're going to ride the city bus and go to the movies so we do, and then my students, when they go into CVS or Walgreens, they go with an assistant, mm -hmm. they go during school, and then they're getting paid for it too. Yeah. Now, if your child is higher, which I think is what you were, t you were part of, they get the job coaches, and then they do that like after school, mm -hmm. um, on the weekends, and then they have someone who helps them and make sure that they're employable, that they know how to keep their job, all right. sorts of things. So there's a lot of support out there. And, you know, just with you just talking about that, I just could reminisce on certain situations and, you know, just for someone 
is similar to myself who who don't have a, a cognitive disability and you know we tend to complain about certain things and working every day and being tired for someone who has a cognitive delay or disability them having that small task but just the fact of having the responsibility of having a job is the most exciting thing for them yes. um, and that for me was the most rewarding thing because I had a young guy, a um, young man, he was in high school and he was just simply putting parts together, um, little parts on, um, I think it were robots. Um, oh, okay. And it was so fun, fun, exciting. He looked forward to it. Um, and, you know, for us, it could, you know, we could complain about doing something so, you know, mundane and, you know, uh, repetitive and things like that. But when you see that type of, uh, excitement it makes your job much more rewarding um so that was something that was good for me uh dr dunn i can definitely relate to that well the autistic children especially Mm -hmm. they need the repetition and that's what we do in the classroom we have we call them vocational jigs and they run from one step to six and seven steps and so they start with just putting in or putting like a top on a jar You know, and then it goes all the way to a seven step sprinkler that has a spring and has all these little nuts and I can't put it together, (laughs) (laughs) you know, but that's what we're teaching them is that they can do that and they can work in either a warehouse Mm -hmm. or take something home and put it together and get paid for it. And, you know, a lot of times my parents don't understand, like, why are you teaching them that? And that is why, because it's, it's an employable skill and it's a skill that a lot of um, main, the mainstream population, they don't want to do that. Right. You know? Yeah. And so mm-hmm. this is something that our, our students and our adults can do. They enjoy doing, they need the repetition and they get paid. They get to be social mm-hmm. with their friends at work. They have to learn to go to work on time to go to work every day, you know, mm-hmm. all of that, or they lose their spot. So there's a lot of skills we teach, you know, during the school day um, to make them as, you know, as um, successful as possible. Dr. Dunn, the services that you guys provide, are they only in person at the location where you guys are located in California? Or do you guys also provide those services online? Our services are in person. We're in a classroom. During the pandemic, we went online. It was very difficult for our students. Um, our, my parents did really well in supporting their students, but it was harder for them because, you know, with the regular ed students, you know, they had a lot of energy at home, but our students have behaviors and sometimes they have one-on-ones in the classroom. And so the parents are suddenly faced with behaviors and students who don't understand why they can't go to school, you know, they don't understand the pandemic or anything, Mm -hmm. and they just wanna be at school. They can't really verbalize what they need or what's going on. And so it was very difficult for them, but we are now back in in class and our students were very um, hands-on. You know, we're very, I have four, there's four adults in my classroom. You know, we have a lot of staff. We do a lot of community activities. And so they really need to be in person. And um, it's, you know, I have a few students now that I'm still servicing online for various reasons, you know, but it's hard on the parents. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. I I can definitely imagine. Um, Dr. Don, before we go into our next topic um, for tonight, are you aware of any free resources because you definitely just mentioned um, that it's hard for parents any free online resources for parents with children with learning disabilities that you could share with the listening audience now I did find there is something called learning disability course Um, oh that's not I'm sorry that's not the right one it's okay Um, Okay, so this was Learning Disability Resources and Tools. It's um, HTTPS www.ldrfa.org, and it has all sorts of different categories to look through. There's also resources for learning disabilities and ADHD. Um, that's through Washington State University. I live in California, so there's a lot of resources um, via 
um, California Department of Ed. They have a special department for special ed. You can also go to, we have something called SELPA. And so it's, I know it has different names in different areas, but you can also find those resources. And those aren't online. Those are in person. You can go and they start, the services start sometimes when the baby's born. If the baby's born with a with an obvious disability, they can receive receive support at home. They will come, they will take help with the baby. There's all sorts of things out here. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a learning learningreviews.com, math for learning disabled. You know, all you have to do is actually Google free resources for learning disabilities and find there's, you know, whatever it is that you need. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody needs something differently. But if you need resources like in your home, like an actual person, you can go to your local school district, your local school, a SELPA, um, the superintendent, you know, they can guide you into the right places. Like when we have our meetings, the nurses and all of that, we have all of those resources and a parent might just kind of offhandedly mention they're having some kind of problem. And, you know, we try to help, you know, we're there to help. So the administration or the nurses would have a resource here, contact this. When they turn 18, that's something that they really need to know. They're adults. It doesn't matter what their cognitive level is or anything else. They're adults. Yeah. So they can easily be taken advantage of. Someone can get them to sign a contract or, you know, all sorts of things. Mm-hmm. So we always suggest that the parents get conservatorship. Now, it doesn't take away from the child. You can still allow your child to make their choices, whatever you think they can make, but it protects them if someone's trying to take advantage of them, you know, or they've made a bad decision, you know, if they've gone and signed a contract or signed up to move into a home and they really can't, you know, like an apartment, they really can't live on their own, you know, it's, they can't do that. So you're protecting your child and then you're not getting you know, into a position that they can't get out of, you know, but you're still allowed to let them make choices if they can. That's the part people, they don't understand. Well, I have conservatorship, so I'm taking away their rights. No, you're not. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. I had a mom on the podcast um, some while ago, um, her son, um, Sam and mom, Deb. And I thought that she was just such an awesome mom because she allows he had he has his own podcast autism rocks and yeah and she allows him to just really be his true self to be a teenager to be a young adult now um and I, i really appreciate that and she's so supportive um but then she's also there to also make sure like what you said that he's not taken advantage of and that the proper decisions are being made but right. but allowing him his own voice and you know even during the podcast she allowed him to answer his questions um you know and if he kind of you know straight away from the, you know to say started saying inappropriate things she would you know gear him back um or, or cut you know cut it short but I just thought that that was just so awesome so I, I think that that's very important um Dr. Don yeah, a lot of times um, we don't focus on the person. Everyone is a person first, and then they might have a disability, and but they're still a person. They still they still want to live their lives, and that's what I promote in my books. My books are based on calendar skills, so there's 12 months, and the queen has a new friend every month, and I include disabilities, but the children. Like I have one little girl who has Rett syndrome and she's going to a classroom. She's making beautiful lays for her classmates and her mom is helping her. I have another student and he was actually my student and he has autism and he uses a communication device. So he's using the communication device um, while he's at the Volcanic National Park. You know, the, they're all just living their lives as part of this journey that the queen is on. And they just have a disability and they're explaining it to the queen. And so we're not focusing on the disability itself, but the child. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you, you jump right into the next, um, the question that I have for you to let's talk about the Queen Renetta's Visitor Educational Series. series. What should we know about this series? Uh, it's Queen Renita. It's named after my grandmother, who is an astute businesswoman and a world traveler. 
And there are 13 books in the series. They're from pre-K to sixth grade and above. And they're based on my actual adventures, my life, my friends, my family, my students. And they, the queen goes camping. I have a book that I wrote with my brother who's an astronomer. I have two on Kona, Hawaii. I have a friend in Kona. I spent a lot of time there. And I actually wrote a book about him and his wife, Sea Captain Jeff and Enchantress Carrie. I have one on a paddle boat trip, uh, one on New Orleans. I'm just getting one out on Tucson, Arizona, a beautiful bed and breakfast, Hacienda Linda. So if anybody's in Tucson, you need to go visit Linda and Dan. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got Diwali and the Day of the Dead and camels and bats and all sorts of um, learning resources. And I'm going to start working on the one I have in Wyoming. Oh, wow. Wow. And what led you to you know, to pursue this series? Well, first it started as an assignment in my credentialing class. And then I decided, well, I wanted to publish the book because teachers publish books. That's what we do. Yeah. (laughs) So I published the first one, Queen Bernita's Visitors. It's pre-K. It's just basic days of the week, months of the years. And she's in the castle. Her friends come to visit her in the castle. And I I immediately won the Evie Award first place. It's a publisher out of Colorado. And she started traveling. People started asking me, well, what are you going to do? And I hadn't thought about marketing or book signings or anything. And so we decided that the queen was going to travel around her kingdom because I love to travel. And she was going to visit the different places. And she was going to teach all about these different places that I go to. And it's just really expanded. I've won 70 awards. I've won some film festival awards. I also write book reviews for Story Monster Magazine. I get books and I read them to my class. We write book reports and then I write a book review. It's published in the magazine. I judge two literary contests through them. I also judge a literary contest for romance books because I wanted to make sure I was reading. So I wanted to do something a little different. So I did that. And I'm also part of the United States Board on Books for Young Children. And I help um, pick the best books for or about disabilities. And so we're wrapping up this year. I think I've been doing that five years now. Mm -hmm. So we're wrapping up this year's nominations. And so if anybody writes books, they can um, uh, send them to the United States Board on Books for Young Children and see if they qualify to be um, part of the committee. Well, yeah, I've had a couple of authors on the um, podcast and they actually do write children's books. So hopefully they will listen to this podcast and check that out. Um, So thank you for that as well, Dr. Dunn. Dr. Dunn, what is the takeaway that you're um, wanting the uh, geared population audience to take away from this series? Oh, family, Mm -hmm. kindness, adventure, and of course, um, education. You know, my books are used all over the world to teach English. They're used in a school in Washington to teach immigrants who are coming here and they don't know how to read or write. And I want families to travel together and to know you don't have to spend a lot of money to travel. I have camping, um, several camping trips. You know, that doesn't cost a whole lot, but family togetherness and bonding and exploring and to know how big the world is. Sometimes we get stuck in our little world and we don't know how big it is. And I want to open that up a little more. So Dr. Dawn, from the information that we shared tonight, do you feel as if there's anything that we missed that you think that we should share with the listening audience? Well, if it's okay, I did want to uh, read something that was sent to me by my friend. He He's a teacher in Washington and he teaches the immigrants and he uses my books to teach um, teach them English and the families use the books. And so he sent me this the other day and it just, it just is like, this is the reason that I'm writing my books. And this is why children's authors write books. You have to, you want to impact somebody, you know, yeah. in a really positive way. So this is what he said. My student that I started teaching English to about seven years ago spoke with me today. He now has a daughter who is turning five years young, and he is reading everything that he can get his hands on now. He just loves to read. Your book started the love of reading for this young man. This isn't the immigrant African native man who was born under a tree on the savannah in Central Africa. He had never written anything in his life before I met him. 
no letters or numbers. He did not know the alphabet or how to count anything. Now he is able to read the newspaper with ease and he is able to manage his numbers well enough to budget his finances in his home. For mathematics, we started by counting the guests eating at the holiday dinner in your visitor's book. My student found that particular illustration was one that he could relate to. Having a meal with a large family, I gave him a copy of the Queen Vernita's Volcanic Islands to give to his daughter for her birthday, and he really lit up. He was so happy to receive your fine book. You have had an amazing impact on this young man's life, and now the life of his child. His little girl will be entering school next year, being able to read fairly well thanks to you. She loves to read and teach her father new words. They learn to read together. Thank you for all that you can that you do and continue to do with your books. But it's just that's just amazing. Wow. Yes, because not only did you help the dad, you also helped the daughter. Yes. Wow. Yep. That should feel amazing, Dr. Don. Yeah, he sent me another one too. And then your books are perfect for what I do with my learners. As of today, another adult ESL person will be reading your visitor's book to her grandchildren for the first time. Grandmother needs to learn how to read in English. She has been here for 10 years. My friend, her daughter, gave your book to her mother and told her to look at the pictures in the book and read the words that are associated with the picture. We hope that this approach is reading is successful. So this is a whole nother family mm -hmm. now, generations that are using my books to learn to read English. So Dr. Dunn, for the listening audience, can you provide the website, the location, a platform where they can go and purchase your book? I have a website, Dr. Don Menge. My publisher is Rushmore Press. They're on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, you just about anywhere online. You just go, either Google Queen Vernita's Visitors or Don Menge. I have a Facebook, Don Menge One, uh, Instagram, Don Menge, and a Twitter, Queen Vernita. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Don. And thank you again for coming on and being a part of the podcast. And thank you for sharing your knowledge and tools on cognitive disabilities, as well as education. Um, and again, thank you for being a part of the podcast, Dr. Don. Well, thank you for having me. And I hope I've helped someone. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Um, the information that you shared was very, very valuable. And then, you know, you also shared resources. So um, I'm definitely knowing that if not some, you'd be able to benefit and help one. So thank you again. Thank you so much. Have a good um, night. Um, so you guys, that brings us to the end of this episode. Thanks to Dr. Don for joining us. We hope that you guys were able to hear something that was beneficial. If you enjoyed our show, please rate and review us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And with that being said, you guys, thanks for listening. And always remember, you are a bond within your own shell. Peace, love, and light, you guys. Until next time, good night. If you enjoyed this podcast, please make sure you subscribe so you're notified when a new episode is posted, rate, review, and share this podcast with your family and friends. Thanks so much for listening, and I hope you're leaving with some valuable information that can help you on your personal journey. Also, check us out on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at Bombshell1111 or at Bombshell1111 TV. You can also check out our mental health page, Your Health is Your Wealth, on Facebook, which is a page created to inform and support individuals with mental health and other health conditions. And with that being said, always remember, you guys, you are a bomb within your own shell. And until next time, peace, love, and light. <laughs>